Brian Powell of Iron on Far here with Max King before the 2014 Western States 100. How are you, Max? Doing good. This is not your first time coming to the start line of Western States. No, it's not my first time. This isn't my first rodeo, you might say. <laughs> How far did you make it that first Western States? Three miles to the top. Or four, depending on who you talk to. But. So, uh... Took the cow man and how route and just uh, yeah, it just well I was yeah. injured coming in. I knew I was that's all I was doing. I just came down because I'd already paid the entry fee. It's like well you already paid, so you might as well. Was it 2009? Yeah, 2009. And I just figured I'd come down and get the experience of the whole festival and um, you know the start. I'm knowing that I was going to be knowing that I'd started you know do it again eventually at some point. So. But you did have the intention of running Western States in 2009. Before I did, yeah, before I got injured, yeah. No, no, yeah. So what made you wait another five years? Just other races. I mean, this is finally, you know, the, the one chance I had to, that there's no mountain running, you know, no mountain running this year. on an up-down year, anyway. Um, there's no track championships this year. So, um, well, there's track championships. Down the road to Sacramento. Yeah, yeah, I thought about running the steeple, actually, on Thursday, which is today. But I decided not to. I figured that not a good idea. I don't know. So you're not racing the, uh, the Montreal 6K tomorrow? Um, I, I thought about doing the steeple. The 6K tomorrow, the 100, and then making it in the finals on steeplechase on the Sunday. I thought that would have been like a good block of racing. If you're like 40. Or no, you. Me. Yeah. <laughs> but you're not doing that. No, I'm not doing that. So. You are focused on this race. Yeah, I'm fairly focused on this race. Yeah. You have uh, you've had a diverse set of races this spring. But you've run more ultras yeah, over uh, the last couple of months. Yeah, knowing that I wanted to get into into Western, like, this spring has kind of been more focused on, like, ultra-centric and stuff. And I haven't tried to kind of back off on racing a little bit and not do as many and just to see how that would shake out. So. Which of the March 50Ks did you jump into? Is it? Uh, Chuck and Chuck. Chuck and yeah, just Chuck. And that went well? Uh, yeah, Chuck and that went well, finally, third time. So got that one out of the way. Sonoma wasn't... Nah, Sonoma didn't. This is the last time you interviewed me was at like Sonoma, so I'm hoping that this isn't like setting this up there. <laughs> Ice Age, however. You did not interview me. Exactly. And went well. Oh, crap. Yeah. But Ice Age did go really it well. Was, it Wait, did how did that. Well. Was the first ultra, like, longer than 50K that you've nailed probably in the last couple of years? Yeah, I mean, uh, JFK was probably my last, yeah, okay. my last yeah. one that I really nailed. But this one I actually even felt better than. I did a GFK, uh, strong all the way through, and had a really good last 10 miles, which I've never been able to pull that off before. Um, so, and that was going going out pretty hard um, for this one too. But the difference here in my stage is that it's you know half the elevation gain that uh, Lake Sonoma had, and I think that plays into a lot. So the flatter course Maybe. suited you. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but it's going to give you some confidence, no matter what the course, that you're fit right now. Yeah, I, I mean, I knew I was fit going into Sonoma. I just don't know what happened. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like I wasn't fit because I ran Ice Age two weeks later. Yeah. You know, so whatever. But it's nice to have that confidence still. Yeah. Yeah, it was nice to get that confidence back. After Sonoma, I'm like, well, I'm never going to run an ultra again because I suck at ultra. <laughs> so. And then, I mean, it's not as high profile race, but Ice Age, that record was stout and it stuck yeah. around for a really long time. It was a good record. It had been challenged by some good guys yeah. and stuff. And, um, so, yeah, I felt pretty good about that one. It wasn't like I went to an easy 50 mile and just blew away the old record that didn't really mean anything. So, that was, yeah, that was good. How have you prepared coming into your first 100 now? Uh, same way I do for like a 3K on the track, basically. Yeah? Yeah, I figured it's... Lots of tempo did, running. Uh, tempos, um, you know. Strides every day. Yeah, that kind of thing. Track work and stuff. Um, no, I uh, just... Um, doing longer long runs, back-to-back uh, -back doubles, and um, it's a little bit more hill climbing, but, you know, trying to stick with the speed, though, still getting in some of that track work. So, so even, you said, since I say do you run some ultra-distance training runs? Yeah. Is that something you've done in the past? Yeah, I mean, like, I'd all, I would always run some ultra-distance training runs and stuff. Um, not, you know, we're not talking, like, big ultra-distance, no. 30 miles. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, gotten a couple of those. Was there more purpose in these or the padding? There was, yeah. Definitely, like, a little more focused on um, big ups and downs. Yeah. Not just, just going out and adventuring. Just, right. Yeah. Um, how do you feel coming into the Western States? Um, I don't know. Hopefully, like, I can make it through 100 miles. Yeah. Well, I don't know, though. I mean, yeah, I don't know. My, I'm not coming in here thinking that I'm going to win the thing, you know. It's like, yeah, it's not. Uh, if I had a good 
really good day, like we're talking maybe top 10. Um, but really, my goal, like right now, I mean, it's pretty disappointing for, for everybody out there. I, but I'm going for 24 hours. I mean, I'm going for the belt buckle. So, you know, we'll have to see how I feel. It all depends <laughs> on how I feel at the, you know, probably when we get to Forest Hill. But, you know, I could. I could be first to four, still blow up, and then I'll walk in the rest of the way and, and hopefully still make it in 24 hours. But that's the goal right now. That's what I'm going You for. want 24 hours? I want the belt buckle. Yeah. So that's what we're going But you're not going to hold back the first 60 miles to make that happen? No, not. not. I'm just going to run how I feel and hopefully run my own race and not let anybody else really dictate that. Um, and hopefully, you know, I'll find myself up there a little ways. But, like, I mean, I... Like in a race like this, like where everybody is really kind of holding back, I could totally see myself like leading through Forest Hill and then totally blowing up and then just, you know, yeah. my then my then my purpose is to finish and then I'm like, you know, race, racing goes up. I don't think stuff. this year is going to be a year where a whole lot of people, there's going to be people not holding back. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's Reasonable like, temperatures, yeah. there's a lot of fast guys, not just the... the trustworthy, you know, they're not trustworthy, but the, the long credential guys who run in Western States strong every year. There's also a bunch of... There's a bunch of fast guys. Yeah. 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 Do you think that's going to change the dynamic of the race? With you and those guys in there. I don't know if it will or not. I mean, you got guys like... Uh, I mean, Rob, he goes out slow. He doesn't go out fast. Yeah. You know, he's not crazy fast. There are some guys in there that probably will go out a little faster, but if everybody's looking at Rob, and I don't know how Ryan runs fans, but uh, if he goes out slow, people are going to be watching those two and keying off to them, and that may not change things too much. It may go out a little bit slower than people think. Do so. you think you could, if it the pace is very fast per se, if people aren't pushing it, that you could actually still hold yourself back and run with, you know, suspected favorites, you know, Crar, Sands? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe. I just I have no idea how it's going to play out. I'm not running it like I did Sonoma. I ran that one like a sissy and really held back and shot myself in the foot. But I mean, I don't know what exactly what happened there. Like I just didn't feel good after halfway there. Uh, legs were just gone. So I'm hoping the legs feel better, but I'm not going to hold back like I did yeah. there. Have you had a chance to get on the course at all? Yeah, I ran the Western States training run here. Um, a couple weeks ago, ran uh, 70 miles of the course, uh, which was pretty nice. You feel like the training up in uh, Bend has prepared you well for it? Um, it's hard in Bend because we don't have enough climbing per se to really hammer your quads and so I've had to drive some places to get some good runs in but yeah I mean I think I think training's been going pretty well to prepare me for the yeah. for the course. And you've actually tapered. Yeah the last like day or two yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you haven't raced in a while. No I haven't raced so uh, just training which has been nice. So, I feel like I get more quality. I, racing I almost feels like too much of a taper for me. Like. Like, yeah, you have the hard effort of the race, which probably mm -hmm. takes some out of you, but, like, training, if my training is more consistent, I feel much better and fitter than if I'm racing more often. Because I feel like, you know, you race, and a couple days before, you're a little low on miles, a couple days after, you're a little low on miles, so you never feel like you're as fit as you would be if you're training consistently. What are you most, what are you the most trepidation about the race? Is there any aspect that it's 100 miles? That would do it. <laughs> as long as you run, is 100k. Uh huh. Yeah. But I keep telling everybody, yeah, I run. I run. I run 100 miles all the time, every week. Totally. There you go. No problem. Um, <clears throat> on the other hand, yeah, you want to you want to finish. You want to get the belt buckle. You've also, I'm sure, dreamed about what you could do here. Sure. Yeah. What uh, what do you think that is? I, I don't know. I mean. Okay. <laughs> Okay. I'm sure everybody has the uh, has the thoughts of you know running across the finish line first, but you know I can't. You know it's not probably going to happen. So there's little guys that are a lot more experienced and a lot faster at ultras than I am. So um, yeah. you've uh, been around the ultra scene now for almost eight years at least. Come on, yeah. somewhere around that. Has it been eight? No, it hasn't been eight. It's been six, right? Six years. Okay. Yeah. See, that's eight with my first ultra. Okay. Quite a while still. Yeah. Um, but during that time, or coming into this race, have you had anybody that you would call consider a mentor for running your first hundred? Yeah, yeah. I, I get a lot of advice from Jeff Browning, who lives in Bend. I, mean, I see him all the time. We run together all the time and do a lot of long runs and stuff. And uh, yeah, he's probably the one that's given me the most advice on you know just how to do this. And so everything I, I structure my racing, like ultra racing around, like nutrition, pacing, gear, all that stuff, kind of comes from. Um, which he's helped 
a ton, you know, with just experimenting. He experiments with himself all the time, mm -hmm. um, and I do too, And but he's kind of the one that really kind of helps further that a little bit quicker than me just trying it out on myself on my own. So. Um, this is your first go at 100, and uh, I heard that you're not going to have a pacer, is that correct? All right, yeah, um, yeah, no pacer. So just I like prefer running alone? Or? Yeah, I like. Um, I like racing myself, and I like either racing my, with myself or like competition against somebody else. And I don't know to have a pacer kind of, you know, it's, they're not in the race. I don't see how that's going to help. Um, and so, you know, and if it does help you, then they're not in the race. Then I don't know. Is that cheating? I don't know. So I don't know. I yeah, I decided not to do a pacer, and I'm not totally opposed to it. I'm not saying you know that people shouldn't have one or the race should ban them or anything like that, but. No, uh, it's just a personal choice. Just decided not to do it. You got a crew though, right? Got, I do have a crew, yeah. Who's uh, uh, backing you up this week? So Tanya, uh, Tanya Little Hales, uh, who I work with at Putzone, and her husband, and my dad will be out here as well. And my aunt, so little little crew. So. I mean, normally don't it, right? Is that a crew? Yeah. Um, no, I usually just have somebody like a fifth mile there hand me something at halfway. <laughs> whoever whoever wants to that I see in the, at, the, at the start line that morning. Here, hand me these at uh, 25 miles. So is that a little different, like almost kind of having to plan that? Or did you, did you just tell your crew, have some stuff for me and I'll but, decide on the way? No, I mean, it's definitely a little more planned and stuff. And Tanya's done 100 milers, 100Ks, and Jeff crews for her. Mm -hmm. And so that helps. They know what they're doing, which is good because I don't. Um, and I'm just laying out kind of what I need, but I'm pretty simple, really. I mean, I don't need that much. This is a little bit different because of the heat um, and stuff. But, um, you know, as far as gear goes and swaps and changes and stuff like that, it's pretty simple and don't need much. So it'll be pretty easy. Pretty much just gels and just water bottles? Give me a bottle of gel and a water bottle, yeah. Do you have any? A lot of ultra runners have a concoction or something for their... I their do, yeah. It's a special concoction. It's called rock paint. Here you go. Yeah. So. Just for you. Yeah, just for me. And anybody else who wants to buy, they can. And yeah, it, it turns out anybody else who wants it can get it too. It's pretty pretty handy. Yeah. And you can just do straight rock tane. I yeah, I just I, that's what I've done. My fifties, my best fifties off of straight rock tane all the time, every fifteen minutes. Uh, so yeah, yeah, pretty uh, easy. All right. Well, best of luck out there, Max. Thanks. And, uh, get that buckle. All right. We'll try.